I'll be showing you step by step how to set up the Shopify ride theme. So let's dive right into it. I'll start from my Shopify dashboard and I'll head to online store on the left hand side. This is going to open up the themes section. And as you can see, I currently have the ride theme installed and I've just installed a new blank copy. If you don't have the theme already on your Shopify store, you can just head to the Shopify theme store by Googling it, sorting by free, and the ride theme should appear here. And from there, all you have to do is click install. And this will be installed on your Shopify store. So once you have it installed, you can publish it by just clicking publish next to the current copy of the ride theme. And from there, let's head into the customization. We can get there by clicking the customize button on the Shopify theme page. So we've just opened up the Shopify theme editor. This is where we're going to make all our changes and customizations to the ride theme. And let's start with an overview. So if you've never used this before, it's split up into sections. So on the left hand side, we have our overall sections. We get a sub menu for whatever we've selected in our overall sections. We have our preview in the middle of the page. On the right hand side is going to be a sub menu. So if we've clicked into any of the elements, I've just clicked into this button element. It's going to show me further settings I can go and edit. On the top here, we can go and navigate by our country location. Typically default is just going to apply to all unless you have specific stores for specific countries. Here we have a navigator so we can navigate to different templates such as the product template or the collection list. On the top right hand side, we're going to get the ability to preview it on different devices. So if I click mobile here, it's going to automatically rearrange my preview window to show me what it looks like on a mobile device. And on the top right hand side is going to be our save button. So to finalize any changes made, we just need to save them here. Let's dive in and start from the left hand side. So we have our sections, which are going to show a breakdown of what's on the page. We have our theme settings. So these are going to be the overall settings, such as setting up our logo, setting up our color scheme and different style settings for things such as our inputs. Where we can change items such as the border, the corner radius and the shadow and so on. And this is going to apply to all of that specific element in our Shopify store. On the bottom here, we have app embeds. So these are going to be external Shopify apps you're installing through the Shopify app store. And if they go and alter the theme at all, you will need to enable them. Although the setup guide in any of these apps should get you to do that. And it's going to guide you through that process. We can also disable them if you come in here. Let's say this is enabled and you want to disable it, you can just toggle it off. So for this tutorial, let's start with some easy settings we can knock off, and that's going to be our logo. So if we click on the logo under theme settings, we can then go and select one. It's going to replace this masterclass dash YouTube as we want our own custom logo here. So I'll click select image. This is going to load all the images I've uploaded to my store. If you don't have it uploaded already, you can just drag it and drop it here or click add images. So if I scroll down, I've already uploaded a logo. So I'm going to click done and that's added the logo to my Shopify store. I think that looks quite a bit nicer. I can change the desktop width. Maybe I want it to be really big. I could do so. I think that's probably too big. So let's drag it back down. We can also select the Favicon image. This is going to be that little icon that shows up in the tab. This is going to let users know which site they're on. So we'll click select image and I'm going to go and select the same image and it's going to automatically scale it down to the correct size. So if I minimize this here, Let's move on to overall colors. So certain sections of the theme are going to use specific color schemes, and these have already been set up. And to note about each of the elements, such as the buttons, we can select a new color scheme if we wanted to. For now, I'll just edit the default scheme one, as this is going to affect most of our site. So if I click on this here, we can see that our overall background is going to be black, and we're going to have a really bright green as our primary color here for our buttons. So let's go and change that. Let's say I want it to be a red instead. I can select this red here. I can go and change the outline to the same red as well. And so if I look at the preview, I can see it's now updated the buttons on my Shopify store here. And if I click on one of the products, I can see it's also using this scheme one. Let's say we're trying to make a change. We want to know what color scheme an element is using. For example, if we want to change this header bar here, I can go to sections. And what I'll do is I'll go to the announcement bar section. I'll click on it. And if I take a look at the right hand side menu here, we can see it's using the color scheme for. It's going to make this super easy as all I have to do to edit it is click edit here. It's going to open up my scheme for settings. Let's say for the background, I want to use white. It just reloaded the page. And now anything using the color scheme for will have a white background rather than that bright green. And let's say for the button label, I'll just go with a blue. And so let's head back to theme settings here as those are our colors. Now I'm not going to go into every single detail as that would make this video extremely long but there are tons of different settings for each element, such as if we open up collection cards, add different settings such as the image padding, text alignment, 
edit the color scheme and so on. Next, let's go into how to rearrange specific pages and add new elements. So we'll start with the home page here. So we can see on the left hand side, it's split up into three overall sections. We have our header, which is going to include our announcement bar and our navigation menu. We're going to go into our template for our home page. So we have an image with text and a featured collection. Lastly, we have our footer, which is going to include several elements, including our email signup form. Now for each of these sections, we can go and add more elements to it. So let's say we want to add something under our featured collection here. I could click add collection and the theme is going to have a ton of pre-built blocks that we can easily add in. So let's say I want to add a featured product instead. So I'll click this featured product. It's going to add this block here. And within this block, I can expand it and change any of the elements. So maybe I want to remove the variant picker and I'll remove those share buttons as well. Within each of these sections, you can also add any blocks. So if you remove anything, you can easily add it back in. This also is going to apply to any of the sections. Clicking the trash can will remove this element. You can also rearrange it just by clicking on it and holding it and I can rearrange it anywhere on the page I would like. And so this logic is going to apply to just about any section, whether you're editing the home page or any of the product pages. And to note, if I want to make any changes to a specific block inside of an element, let's say I want to make a change to this button here. If I click on it, it's going to open up the right hand side menu and I can change the label. So this is going to be the text here. So instead of shop, I could say shop our latest camping gear and I can change the button link. So instead of all products, maybe I want to go to collections and let me select my camping collection. So if I click on this here, it's going to bring me to my camping collection rather than going to all products. So let's hit save in the top right there. And I'll show you quickly as well as if we head to the products page, this same logic is going to apply. So I can rearrange any of the elements I want. I can remove them. And I can also add new blocks. Let's say for example, I want to move this text here as I don't want the store name there. I can remove that easily. So let's head back to the homepage. If you've made any sales on Shopify, you know how hard it is to keep track of how much money your store has actually made. That's where our sponsor Profit Calc comes in, the one-click profit calculator available for your Shopify store. All you have to do is select the date range you're looking for to get real-time calculations so you can see how profitable your Shopify store really is. It's going to give you tons of details, analytics, and breakdowns so you can truly understand your store's performance so you can start making smarter business decisions. It's going to save you hours and hours of time so you don't have to go and use spreadsheets that you're going to update once a month. ProfitCalc is going to enable you to stay on top of your store and you can get started with a 15-day free trial so you can test drive everything for yourself. You can find it in the Shopify app store by searching ProfitCalc and looking for this logo in the top left, there's also a link in the description below to access that Shopify app listing directly. So make sure you check that out and start truly understanding your store's performance. I'm going to navigate to the theme settings and we're going to change an important part of every Shopify store and that's going to be the cart page. So to access that, I'm going to scroll down on theme settings, open up cart, scroll down even further so I can access all of them. And these, we can add some overall cart settings. So for the cart type, we get three options. The first one is going to be drawer. We have page and pop-up. So if I click on a product here, let's preview what these look like. For the drawer, if I click add to cart, it's going to pop up a drawer on the right hand side. For the page, if I click add to cart again, it's going to redirect me to the cart page. Lastly, we have the pop-up notification. If I click add to cart one more time, we can see it's a pop-up here. I personally prefer the page, but it's going to be completely up to you on what you're looking for. So if we head to the cart page, we get a few other customization options, such as showing the vendor and enabling the cart note. It makes it super easy just to toggle these off and on, depending on what you're looking for. We can also select our collection when the cart drawer is empty. So I could select this camping collection, and I can also change the color scheme used. As currently we're using scheme one with our red buttons here. Next, I'll click the checkout toggle here. And this is going to show us some settings for our checkout process. So if I click checkout, this is going to bring me to the standard checkout here. So I can go and add a custom logo. It's going to create some consistency in my store. So again, I'll go to select image, scroll down, select the same logo. I'll click done. So that's going to update that at the top there. I can change the position, change the size. I can also do things such as adding a background image or changing the colors here as we might want to do this to match our Shopify theme. And we'll stick with the recommended one page checkout process. And to finalize these changes, let's hit save in the top right. And so if I navigate back to my homepage, I think we've got a really good overview of the Shopify ride theme settings. So we understand how the navigation for the theme editor works, how we can finalize changes, how we can add sections or remove sections, how we can head into each element and change it. Overall, there are a ton of different customization options. And the only way to really get comfortable 
comfortable with the theme editor is just by practice going in, clicking around, trying to edit different elements and previewing the effect here. You can also do so not on a live theme. So if you don't publish it to be live, you can go and make any changes you want without worrying that it's gonna impact customers. But overall, it's a very well-performing Shopify theme with lots of pre-built templates and blocks and sections and many customization options. It's also completely free here. It's really hard to beat that price. So this is gonna conclude the video on how to set up the Shopify ride theme. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it so much if you smash that like and subscribe button below. I have tons of videos covering the Shopify ride theme specifically, so make sure you check them out if you're looking for further guidance on how to set it up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.